Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well. In this episode I want to show you how do I prototype my 8-bit computers. I started my experiments uh, with 8-bit CPUs on uh, just a regular breadboard. Um, it works very well when you're dealing with uh, some simple circuits at running at low frequencies but kind of gets very clunky when you start expanding your computer circuits with the more I.O. and, for example, graphics options. Um, the problem of clunkiness was solved by using the higher density integrated circuits like uh, SAPLD chips from Atmel and uh, the special breadboard adapters made by Technological Arts. Um, these adapters are very convenient. They just plug in into the breadboard like uh, uh, normal integrated circuits and you can wire up uh, pretty much any signal you want uh, into your uh, circuit. Uh, these adapters exist in various uh, sizes, package sizes for CPLDs. Uh, for example, this is a PLCC 84 pin um, adapter. These are, uh, I think it's a 68 and this one is 44. I usually use this small one for uh, the glue logic to decode uh, chip select signals for the memory, for I.O. Uh, this one uh, usually goes as a graphics controller uh, for my computer and this one as a dual port memory uh, for the graphics controller. Uh, uh, prototyping with these adapters became much more uh, convenient, but I still was facing the signal integrity problems. Uh, the computers uh, I made on the breadboard were not so stable. Uh, the video signals were kind of a bit jerky. Uh, the adapter could lose a synchronization signal and uh, the entire picture disappears. Or, for example, the computer, entire computer could hang uh, because of some instability of some data or address lines. You could even uh, make it unstable by waving your hands uh, over the uh, circuit. Uh, tired uh, dealing with this uh, signal integrity issues, I came up with uh, this solution. Uh, this is a breadboard-like uh, printed circuit board. Um, it's has, it has uh, many convenient locations uh, for placing the integrated circuits of uh, various packages. For example, PLCC44, narrow D packages, wide D packages, and also provides some uh, facilities to deliver like a common bus signals and the power to these integrated circuits. On the top side of this board, you can see just uh, markings on the seal screen for your convenience, where you can, well, can determine uh, where the package will go and uh, some uh, some uh, traces uh, hinting you how the signals are routed on the board. On the bottom you will see uh, a lot a lot of soldering points. Uh, the basically idea is uh, when you place the socket uh, into the board and put uh, integrated circuit in it, you will have like on a regular breadboard uh, multiple soldering points for each pin of the integrated circuit. Uh, for PCC, for example, you can see here uh, around the uh, package, you will see three or more um, soldering points per pin. Here you can see uh, two soldering points and here another two soldering points per each pin of the package. Power on this board is very conveniently routed in the way that you mostly don't need to uh, run uh, wires uh, from the power traces uh, that are going around this board and the, um, the package itself. Um, usually uh, packages have the uh, VCC uh, power pin uh, in the top right corner and the ground pin on the bottom left. And the power traces are uh, running um, exactly at the, uh, near these pins. Another convenient feature of this board is the common bus. Um, it starts at the top of the board and comes to the very bottom. And as you can see, there are 40 mm, kind of soldering locations that are extended like vertically uh, from top to bottom. Uh, for example, you can use 
um, uh, these uh, soldering locations to connect, uh, for example, your address or data bus or uh, various bus control signal um, from the CPU to the uh, different integrated circuits like memory, ROM, uh, like I.O. controllers and uh, everything like that. I made these boards in uh, different layouts. Uh, this layout I was showing to you is mostly well suited for the uh, CPU, where you can place the, the processor here, for example, some, some necessary buffers, maybe other uh, 74 series logic over here, uh, clocks, uh, the address decoders and other um, kind of functions in the CPLD. Um, this layout, for example, uh, I made for the graphics controller. Um, as you can see, there's a conveniently placed uh, VGA uh, controller, uh, VGA port soldering location, and uh, uh, some kind of breadboard-like uh, space to uh, put some uh, passive components like resistors and such. Uh, for example, you can build here the resistor DAC and uh, maybe if it's a sound card, you can you can build the sound amplifier and there's a uh, location to place the uh, TRS jack over here. This is an example of a fully assembled board. That's a graphics controller. As you can see, it has the controller chip, the graphics memory. It's a dual port static memory, uh, some buffers, uh, resistor DAC, and the VGA output, and of course the VGA clock. Uh, on top you see the power input, usually 5 volts, uh, the JTAG connector for programming CPLD, and uh, IDC, 40 pin IDC connector to uh, connect this board to the rest of the boards, um, kind of laid out uh, like a sandwich. The other side of this board is where actually all the magic it ha happens. Uh, here you can see I use a 30 gauge uh, wire wrapping wire to connect all uh, the uh, components into the circuit. It is very easy and very convenient. Uh, yes, it takes a, a bit more time than the usual breadboard and you have to be uh, a bit careful um, to not to kind of miss anything. Uh, but it gives you a great reward of uh, flexibility because you can uh, quickly, for example, change the reprogram this chip to have a little bit different pinout um, if you decided to change something and you can quickly rewire uh, your layout here uh, to match the the changes you made uh, in the in the CPLD chip, for example, or you figured out that uh, some idea doesn't work well, um, the signal is not good, for example, and you want to add some additional circuitry uh, to this board, you can quickly mm, unsolder all the wires, rewire them as you wish, and uh, you will have uh, new implementation very quickly comparing to uh, making adjustments to your design in the CAD and sending uh, for example, your uh, kind of traditional printed circuit board to the manufacturer uh, for the next revision of your board. And here is the final prototype I made uh, with these boards. Um, it has a sandwich-like configuration and all the boards are connected with the ribbon cable here. Uh, this cable carries over um, like I said before, address bus, data bus, and various uh, bus control signals to the different boards. Also, some additional communication signals in between the boards. And each board has its own designation. For example, the top board is uh, the processor itself with uh, ROM and memory and some support logic. The second board is the graphics controller with the VGA output and JTAG connector, so I can reprogram this uh, controller quickly. The third board is uh, the floppy controller, keyboard controller, and a uh, serial port. Um, the last board on the bottom uh, holds uh, two ports for the uh, joystick and the audio output. If you want to see this prototype in action, please leave the comments below. I will make an additional video showing you what it's capable of. Um, 
don't forget to subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the bell icon, hit the like button, and uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.